At the end of the day, Bucky and I drove the few blocks from his office to his geodesic dome house on South Forest Street for dinner with Ann. The house was a microcosm of Fuller's universe. Spherically coordinate, uncompromisingly simple in design, and at home in its environment. Its scale and weathered wood framing were quite in harmony with the conventional houses with front porches and side yards that composed the rest of the elm-shaded neighborhood. As you enter the house, the first impression is the absence of the familiar four-square cubicle framework of rectangular floors and straight walls. The effect is totally disorienting to our reflexive assumption that rooms should be shaped more or less like shoeboxes. The result is that Fuller, as an architect, has created an artifact, like all of his inventions from the Dymaxion car to the vast dome at Montreal's Expo 67, an artifact intended to instruct. You cannot enter the house on South Forest without receiving a lesson on how we might organize our environment with spherical and hexagonal economies simply not available in the structure where all the rooms have to be cubes. The dome leads your eye in, out, and around, not up and down like the box. The interior walls of the house are a complex of prisms in which the living room shares a high dome with a curved balcony containing a library. Wide glass doors open on a hedged backyard. The abstract unfamiliarity of the design is tempered by the coziness and comfort of the family's furnishings. A ladder back chair from Bucky's great aunt, Margaret Fuller, big blue antique china dogs from Anne's grandfather, a new telescope, an old barometer, a modern metal network sculpture by Ruth Asawa, an old African carved stool, a Japanese electric clock with an airplane on the sweep second hand. Here is a very American blend of the innovative and the traditional, modern technology and fine old craftsmanship, a fitting home for the intermittent residence of a man who says that in this jet age century, for the first time, Everyone's backyard has become the whole earth.